Hello, it's Doug from Behind Closed Doors, and today we're going to be looking at some Andrew Tate videos dealing with the subject of heartbreak and what happens when a girl breaks up with you. Now, one of the reasons I'm doing this is because my girlfriend broke up with me at Christmas. Uh, I think it was just after or around Boxing Day, something like that. And uh, we're just in early February now. I was with her for over two and a half years, coming up to three years, and she is the most amazing girl I've ever met. We had the best relationship together. She was my dream girl, everything I could have wished for and more. I loved her with all my heart. I was so happy with her. And when she decided to leave me, I was even happier afterwards. So if you can get into that mindset where I'm happy, and if I'm with a girl, I'm happy. And when she leaves, I'm happy. If you can get into that position, that is much better than feeling all the pain and all the heartbreak and all the sadness that comes with uh, couples breaking up. Now, I just didn't have this. I'm not like an artist or anything. I'm, I'm not just cold and dead on the inside. I've had so much heartbreak in my life. So I know what heartbreak feels like. And I've had it in several different ways. I mean, I've had children taken off me. I've had girlfriends leave me. I've so many, much shit, as we all do. And it's a, it's a universal human feeling of heartbreak. And whether it's your pet that passes away, or whether it's uh, somebody that you're close to leaves, or whether it's a, a boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever it is, heartbreak can be devastating. It's the first time a girl broke up with me, it took me 10 years to get over it. I was only with her for a few weeks, but in my mind I thought we were going to be together forever. And I thought that she would always tell me the truth and would love me unconditionally and all this kind of shit. And then, like, it really destroyed me and it really red-pilled me as well. It took a long time for me to digest and swallow the red pill. But once I did, I was fine. And once I accepted things the way that they are, I was groovy. And once I had a philosophy and an ethic, I, I'm, I'm bulletproof. I'm, like Tate says, I've got an iron mind. It doesn't affect me. Uh, so when my ex left me at Christmas, it was fine. But every day has been better since. <laughs> like, I'm just going to keep getting better and better. And I hope that she finds somebody else and gets another guy and, and does whatever she believes will make her happy. I really want the best for her because I genuinely love her. And she's never hurt me. She's never done anything to um, spite me. She came into my life. She blessed me. And now she's gone again. It was a bit like uh, winning the lottery. Like you get a lottery win and you're millionaire for a few years. And then you lose it again. And you go, ah, well, at least I won the lottery. You have it with children, like you get children and then they grow up and they're no longer kids anymore. And you're like, well, at least I got to have children. Some people can't have children. So I want to make this video because it's an optimistic video. Whether somebody loves you or doesn't love you, you can still love yourself and be happy in spite of everything. You don't have to be heartbroken. You don't have to have malice. You don't have to have anger and resentment for anyone else. You can genuinely be happy. So without further ado, let's get into the video. What did you do with the pain of the heartbreak? I did the same thing I do if my heart wasn't broken. I got up, I went in the gym, I lifted a bunch of weights, I got in my fast car, I drove down the road looking sexy as fuck, bought a Starbucks, and made some money. It doesn't matter. How I feel has no bearing on how I live my life. And that's beautiful. And if you can get to that stage, that's the best place to be. What do you do with that emotional pain? Is it pain? Isn't it? I don't know, man. Because I know pain. And I'm talking real pain. Physical pain. Uh, yeah, but physical pain. People, go, look, people have this idea that emotional pain's worse. They ain't never had a knife stuck in their skin. They, I know pain. They never had their face broken. I know pain. Like real pain. Uh, everyone can imagine being sick. That's pain. You're sick. Like really sick. This is very topical right now. You know when you're in bed and you really feel like on the verge of death. That's like the worst experience ever. I don't fear emotional pain. Even if in the worst possible scenario my brother died, that's the worst thing that could possibly happen to me, I'm still going to get up, go to the gym, lift weights, drive my cars. I'm still, because it's just, just all you can do is progress. I, I don't see, I don't, I don't think physical, I don't think emotional pain needs direct, it doesn't need direct attention. I don't believe it does. I believe it needs to be ignored and it will go away. Yeah, and a lot of emotional pain is unnecessary suffering over things that you can't control. So once you just accept things, a lot of the unnecessary emotional pain goes away. You don't think people need time to mourn? Like when your father died, did you need time to mourn? Absolutely you can mourn, but you can mourn while you lift those weights, while you drive that car, 
And while you buy that coffee, like, uh, so when my father, I'll give you an example. When my father died, I just moved to Romania. I, I had just started my, I had my webcam company. I moved here. I had six girls with me. I spent all my money moving all my stuff out of England and get to Romania, setting up the house that uh, my dad, when my dad died. I had that turned out well, didn't it? Fucking Romania. Two choices. I said, do I either fly back to the funeral? And my dad was my hero. My relationship with my dad is much closer than most people have had with their dad. Like, it's not like we had a distant relationship. He was my hero in every regard. Do I fly to his funeral? Or, and then what's going to happen is I'm going to blow all my money. I'm going to be away for weeks. These girls are new. They're going to vanish. They're in Romania on their own. They don't know anyone here. They're going to want to go home. Da -da -da -da. Or do I suck it up and focus on my business? And I've got my mum... Yeah, that's the thing to do is to just keep doing what you would do anyway. Just stick to your healthy habits and just do it being sad. Like, what else is there to do? Provide for. Me and Tristan have started this company. We spent all our money. And I missed my dad's funeral to run my business. And even my sister messaged me. You're sad, but the bills need paying. So what are you going to do? Dad, you're so insensitive. I said, look, I'm my father's son. If he was alive, he'd slap me in the mouth for fucking up my income but for, the, for the whole family. And fucking up my chance of building a legacy for this family and letting, making sure mum never has to work again to go fuck to a fucking funeral. I can mourn from here. It's very yeah, I'm not a fan of funerals. I don't like going to them and I, I very rarely go to funerals. Um, I said that the other day to someone and says, no, nobody likes going to a funeral. <laughs> it's like, yeah, but I really don't like going to a funeral. Same is true with weddings. I'm not a nasty person. I just don't like going to weddings either. Like, I, don't, I just don't like those kind of social events. And I, and the, the day he died, I found out at 1 p.m., 5 p.m., I'm commentating on live TV. The next day, I'm running my webcam studio. Was I devastated? Absolutely. But what did I do? The same shit I would have done if he was alive. Okay. First things first is that going through a breakup sucks. And every single man out here, no matter what they say, understands how bad it is to go through a breakup and understands what heartbreak's like. It's difficult, it's not easy. I yeah, that is true. And that's why I'm making this video, because um, I want to help young lads or people, that, even older lads, that are going through heartbreak and uh, an abundance of unnecessary emotional pain. I actually like to argue that men feel more heartbroken than women. I think that's facts. I think it's true. And I think it's because one of the possessive element that we have. Yeah, I believe that is true as well. Like women have a completely different emotional tolerance to men. That's how I learned emotional resilience is just to copy fucking women because they don't give a fuck. So if you just don't give a fuck either, then you're OK. The worst thing you can do when a girl leaves you is care about it. Because they don't give a fuck about you, so why should you care about them? And you know all this thing about, well, I love her. Well, if you love her, and she's happy sucking someone else's dick, then you'll be happy for her then, won't you? Like, if you genuinely love her and want her to do well, you want her to go and be happy. Well, she's found happiness. Happiness. She's found happiness <laughs> elsewhere. So, let her be. Let her go. You can't... You can't negotiate desire, and the, the way that I manage my love life is that, to me, love is a decision. I make a decision to love you. I love you because you love me. Sounds like a fucking Barney the Dinosaur song. But I love you as long as you love me. The moment you stop loving me, I'll stop loving you. It's not a problem. In the same way that if I want to close my hand, I think about it, and I close my hand. If I want to open my hand, I think about it and I open my hand. It's a decision. I can open or close my hand. It's the same as like a boundary, emotional boundary function. If someone's being nice to me, I'll accept it and I'll give it back. If someone says, I don't love you anymore, fuck you, I wish you'd die, I close the door and say, "Good." I won't, I won't return that negativity. I'll be like, take care of yourself, I wish you all the best. Because I don't want to be negative. Because if I allow them to infect me with their negativity, then... It's no good, is it? I've had girls leave me in several different ways. And like I say, the girl that left me recently did it the most uh, graciously, I believe. As soon as she said she wanted to break up with me, I just turned up the phone, packed her stuff and got it out. Because the stuff was at mine. It was over the phone. So I just got it out. And it didn't bother me at all. The sooner I got her stuff out the flat, I could get on with doing my work. You know, you're like a train on a train track. You're living your life and you're going to achieve great things. And she can get on the train... And she can get off at the next stop if she wants to. If she doesn't want to be on the train anymore. 
But what she can't do is hijack the train and blow the train and threaten to blow the train up. That's not good. And that's what some women do. That's what and why Andrew Tate's in jail at the moment. Because some girl's saying that he did this, he did that, he did the other. And now he's in fucking jail for months with no fucking charges still. And uh, his brother, Tristan, had a baby daughter. I, can't, I still can't fucking believe that. He hasn't even seen his baby daughter been born or been near or met her because he's been in fucking prison because of some dumb bitches tried to destroy their life. Oh, it pisses me off. That pisses me off. <laughs> when people are arseholes unnecessarily. Anyway, let's get back into the video. The idea of the idea of her being with someone else hurts more than the idea of you being with someone else to her. And secondly, because you have a lot less... Yeah, because if somebody cheats, let's say, let's say the woman cheats on the guy, the first thing the guy wants to know is, did you fuck him? That's the first thing he wants to know. Did you fuck him? Because that it, that it means a lot to the guy that you fuck somebody else. Women don't care if you fuck somebody else as much. What they care about is if you love somebody else. So the first thing that the woman will say is, Oh, you cheated. Do you love her? It's the first thing they ask. They don't care so much about the sex. It's more about the emotional betrayal they don't like. And yet it's the thing that they do the most. <laughs> True, and I think it's because one of the possessive element that we have, the idea of the idea of her being with someone else hurts more than the idea of you being with someone else to her. And secondly, because you have a lot less options than she has instantly. So I think that breakups are worse for men than they are. Yeah, it's going to be a lot harder for men to establish a new relationship and get back into relationships and even just get someone to fuck them. It's going to be so difficult in this new era of technology. It's getting harder and harder for men to find a mate. So she can go on Tinder or Bumble or whatever and within like a few minutes get like a hundred guys that want to fuck her. And it might take a guy a few months to get 100 matches. So there is a complete asymmetry in the way in which people um, sexually select online. And that's one of the reasons why men don't want to split with a girl. But that's one of the reasons why you've got to stay in abundance as a man. And having your options open with women. And also just loving yourself more than you love the person that you're with. You are the most important person in the relationship. Because given enough time, the majority of women will eventually leave. They struggle to stay in relationships. They really struggle. Women really want to get married and then they really want to get divorced. So men find it really difficult to get sex and women find it really difficult to stay in relationships. For women, and I understand how difficult and hard they can be. However, unfortunately, the unfortunate reality is that chasing her and, and, and being dedicated to her and saying you're going to do whatever she wants, etc. is very unlikely to work. It's very unlikely to work and you have to look... I've never known it to work and if it does work, it doesn't really work. The man should be in charge of the relationship, so the man is above the woman. Now, what she's doing by leaving is saying that I'm better than you and I don't respect you anymore and fuck you, I'm going to go with somebody else. That's what she's saying. And she can be saying it in a nice way. So when she's with you, she's like, I love you, I'll never leave you. And then even when she's leaving you, she's still trying to maintain the illusion that she pretends to give a fuck about you while she's leaving you. When she really doesn't give a shit, she's trying to be in control of the relationship. So then the men come back with, oh, I'll do whatever you say. And it never works because she loses even more respect for the guy. The scenario you're in, look at the chessboard and make the best possible move. When you're heartbroken, you true, when you're truly heartbroken, you can't even sleep. And your mind is constantly preoccupied. And instead of seeing that as a negative, what you need to do is use that as a source of unlimited power. If I was truly heartbroken today, let's imagine, and I could barely sleep, I'd be in better shape than I've ever been. I'd train like a fucking animal. You have to just take... First time a girl left me, I was in... I, I, I trained all the time, and this is what I looked like. I was just... That was me. I, I, I'd never been so depressed there. That was my most depressed. I wasn't eating. I wasn't doing that. I was just going to the gym and working out and going back to my fucking flat. And in this photo, I'm depressed as fuck. But I look fit as fuck. The energy inside of you, energy cannot be destroyed. It can only be converted. Whether it's heat into light or... This is really important because you've got to be able to use the feedback as energy. So it's sort of like if you do something and it works, do more of it. And then you work on the momentum of things going well. If you do something and it doesn't work, then use what you've learned to be able to progress further. Extract the wisdom from the learning. Uh, the momentum into friction or whatever, whatever you, however you want to put it, right? Energy cannot be destroyed. It can only be converted from one form to another. 
And you have to look at that and understand that the sadness inside of you is energy. You can't destroy it, but you can convert it into something else which is constructive. And you just have to suck it up by our cup and get over it. Yeah. And there's no other way to do it. And obviously having an abundance of women makes that easier. But I wouldn't even put it that way. I'd say if you were with a woman and you lost her and you're now lonely and she's going to be moving on and you're absolutely not really heartbroken and you're destroyed inside, I understand how difficult that is. But now you have genuine sadness inside of you, which is unlimited motivation for you to become a fucking beast, become an animal. And by the time you're finished becoming an animal, you won't care anymore. So if you really want to cure yourself, you can just say, I'm going to get a six pack and I'm going to get bigger arms. And by the time my arms are this size and I have a six pack, then I'm going to think about that bitch. And you'll realize you don't give a shit about her anymore. That's just you see, when you've got more options and you've got abundance, you just don't care as much. There's loads of guys that will happily fuck a girl and not give a shit about her and pretend to love her. And so the problem that women have is they don't really know if a guy loves them until they fuck them. And then if the guy does love them, then they tend to lose respect for them and get rid of them anyway. So they're either with a guy that is fucking them that doesn't want to be with them, or they're with a guy that is fucking them that loves them and they end up getting rid of. So the thing I've never understood about women is that they always walk away from somebody that loves them based on their fucking happiness in the moment. It's so sad because women don't give a fuck. Like, you think you don't give a fuck as a guy. Women really don't give a fuck. This is the thing, is that I would never walk away from somebody that loved me. Why would you do that? It doesn't make any sense. Even if I was miserable, even if I was unhappy, even if I thought, this is bollocks, or even if I thought, I can get someone better than this, I'd still stay in the relationship. Because why would you walk away from somebody that is giving themselves over to you? It doesn't make any sense. If this guy loves you, and you walk away from him, if you find another guy that loves you, you'll walk away from him as well. And you'll constantly keep going through the guys. And then you'll get to 40, 50, you'll be alone. And if you haven't had any children by then, and you've had a string of bad relationships, you'll start getting really resentful. You think you're resentful now, you'll get really resentful. And so you've got to be very careful about the decisions that you make. And at the same time, you've got to allow people to make their own mistakes so they realize what they've done. Like when a girl is with me, I'm in charge and we're having a great relationship. And I base it based on what she's giving me. If she's giving me love in the way of honesty, trust and respect, loyalty, while she's with me, and then she decides not to be with me, I just cut it all loose. It's not a problem because I didn't give up. She's given up on relationships. She may be with a new guy or a new few guys or whatever, but really inside of her soul, she's given up on relationships because if she's walking away from one guy that loves her, She'll just go to another guy that loves her and walk away from that as well. So she'll just constantly keep going through her life, walking away from men that love her. When I was 20, me and my girlfriend broke up. I was with her for four years. I, I, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't, and this is before social media. You couldn't just chase a bitch. Like, you, that was it. She's gone now. Like, she moved. I didn't know where she lived. That was it. And I couldn't sleep. Now, I, it wasn't like I was crying my eyes out, but I was just... Yeah, this is where you're kind of keeping tabs on your ex, you know, and um, I really don't do that because I've got better things to be doing. But at the time you do, you're like, well, where is she? What is she doing? You're like, is she okay? Like, oh, I hope she's all right. Like you pretend to even fucking care for a bit. Like, or could you just pining after her? Whereas now, like I could happily never see a photo of my ex, never see a video of my ex. I could never communicate with her again, quite happily. <laughs> Where's my, my hoe at? I couldn't sleep. Need something else to do. Need something else to do. So I thought, fuck, I'll hit the gym at 6 a.m., hit the gym at 3 p.m., hit the gym at 8 p.m. I had nothing else to do but fight. So I took all that trauma, all that heartbreak, and I molded it into becoming a world-level combatant, right? So there's nothing. What did we talk earlier about how trauma can mold you? How trauma can be a fantastic thing. Mm. Heartbreak, depression, sadness, these are all fantastic motivators. Yeah, and like um, like I said, when this girl left me at Christmas, I packed all her stuff, took it to her house, um, and then when I got back, the next morning I woke up and set up a Tinder account, set up a Bumble account, set up a Hinge account, and I got back on it. I got back recruiting again. That's what you got to do. You're just, I'm telling you why they're a fantastic motivator. You go to a guy who's heartbroken, he has all the motivation in the world to send 300 text messages. <laughs> he has the motivation, he's putting it in the wrong place. That's 300 cold emails you could be that sending. Just just that a bit. Or that somebody going on to, like I just said, Bumble or Tinder or whatever, going on to another fucking dating app and getting somebody else. So this is the thing, and this is why I sell my course, What to Message a Girl for Online Dating Success. Because once you do get the matches coming in, you won't know what the fuck to write to them in order to get her out on a date. So my course teaches you that. A little quick plug there. 
there'll be an advert at the end of the video. But I'll tell you exactly what to write, what to say, how to conduct yourself, all that kind of bullshit. I recommend it highly, I can't recommend it enough. A lot of money you could have made. Yeah, I'll tell you right now, some of the, the greatest accomplishments in my life have come after a heartbreak. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, Absolutely. it's, it's that fuck, I call it fuck you energy. Yeah, no, you take that and you're like, yeah, again, I had that when I was younger. I was like, fuck her, I'm going to show her, I'm going to be the best of the best. And not, and, but as I've gotten older, I just don't care. <laughs> I just don't give a fuck. Because <laughs> um, I just, I self-validate and I love myself and, like, I know who I am and, like, do you know what I mean? I know how to please me better than anybody. And so, uh, you know, she doesn't want me to give her love. That's fine. I'll go give it to somebody else who's giving me love. It's, you just on somebody else to exchange with it's not an issue i i because some guys will get butt hurt about that and they'll sit there and they'll wallow in self-pity mm. i've always thought the correct application of that energy is okay prove that she made a shitty mistake mm -hmm. go out and become a fucking million no i don't agree with that and here's why i don't agree with that because maybe she didn't make a mistake maybe the next guy that she goes with they're gonna uh, get married and be together for 50 years and have lots of children together and if you genuinely truly love her or loved her while you're with her then you want that for her you want the best for her so you've got to allow them to make their own decisions obviously so i don't think it's a case of you competing with her expectations or with this new guy that she with it's bollocks. It's all bollocks. I I mean, that is another way of having it. If you're angry and hurt and upset, it's better to do that than it is to go and uh, be really nasty and, and take it out all negatively and stuff. To be honest, like, I'm just as happy when a girl leaves me as when I get together with her. I love myself, so I don't need her to love me. The fact that she loves me is a bonus. Yeah, go out and become a kickboxer, go out and become a porn star, whatever. Go out and build steel buildings, right? And then she's going to look around when she's 50 pounds heavier in a year's time, you're like, motherfucker, oh, I let him, I let him go. Yeah. You can, and, and internally, yes. the, uh, be happy. my ego could be like, yeah. I got you. Yeah, I don't have that I got you moment. I think that's bollocks. But, you know, again, every guy to their own. You know, it's bollocks for me. Like, I wouldn't like to do that. It just doesn't make me feel good. I want to do things that make me feel good and that are productive and that are helpful and useful. And so I don't, that all that kind of like, ha, 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 ha energy. I've had it, I've experienced it when I've gone through a bad breakup in the past when I was a bit more immature, but and it, young lads might need to hear that and it's okay to feel that way and use it productively to go and lift weights and all that kind of shit. Uh, and to get your own back kind of a thing by being a better guy than what she left. But to be honest, even if you just keep doing what you're doing, you're going to improve as a guy over time anyway. And her market value is going to decline over time anyway. A girlfriend is a depreciating liability. She's not an appreciating asset. So over time, a market value will go down, it's, and it's going to need to be bolstered up. Life's, life's going to hurt you, and how you use that pain is completely and utterly up to you. You can use that pain to galvanize yourself as a man and become a better man than you've ever been. I'm not saying that I'm only successful because of some chick. I'm saying that every single time that I was heartbroken, I never wasted a second. I was never wallowing. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Especially as a young man. Absolutely. Yeah. We, talk, we talked about this on the show. You're going to get your heart broken yeah. as a young man. I've had it happen to me. Yeah. We've all had it happen to us. The... And, and it's not even about anger towards a girl. Yeah, and it's the same old fucking story. Because I hate it when people say, like, oh, it's not all women, and, oh, well, you just haven't picked the right girls, and, and women get competitive and defensive over their, like, you know, other females. And, look, these are guys from all over the world. There's loads of other videos of guys saying exactly the same thing from all different cultures, from all different parts of the world, at different times in history, and they're all saying the same fucking thing. If she loves you, love her back. And if she fucks off, fucking ignore her. It's just, that's the only winning move is not to play the game. All these guys can't be wrong. Like, it can't be the guy, can it? Maybe there's something actually going on. When most marriages fail because women are leaving them and there's such an asymmetry in the way in which relationships are destroyed, women struggle. They struggle to stay in relationships because they just want to be happy. They don't want to be content and fulfilled. They care more about how they feel about you as opposed to how you feel about them. It's seven years later because as a man you're gonna get your value later yes right so if you use that energy to put all that work in these girls they come back around and i love to see them come back oh. not because i'm in love again just because it's like yeah. 
you know. No, I told like, yeah, you yeah. so. <laughs> no, I, I said this like anybody who tries to get revenge on a woman, oh, on a woman, way. it's a you're an, that's incel energy. That's that's a wrong way of looking at it. The only revenge you can get on a woman who breaks your heart is success. Success is the best revenge. Just level up slowly. When she messages you, you got two choices. You can either say sorry, baby, you're not my type anymore. Boom, you win. Or you could fuck her again. One last spin on the Ferris wheel. Yeehaw. So. But yeah, it's uh, honestly just I, I don't think about them at all. Every now and then, like oh, I miss that girl, and then I play a bit of chess for like two minutes, and then I play a bit of chess and I'm over it. It's not oh, that was sad, wasn't it? Yeah, but I'm just happy. Now you have more time and energy and freedom, and like you got it all back. So you win either way because it's lovely to be in a relationship as well, and it's lovely to be by yourself. So. You win either way. So that's the answer to the question. Put, put a plan together for the heartbreak if it comes and make sure that plan is constructive. Yeah. Everything we've been saying on this podcast is true. Trauma's going to come. Pain's going to come. And you have to use it in a constructive way. I'm not telling you to tell him to avoid the pain. I'm saying that when it comes, make sure it's used in a constructive way. And, and still to this day, that's all I would ever do. You can't avoid the pain or repress it. You've got to use it positively. Because, and you don't want to use it negatively because there's three things you've not got to do. You've got to take the pain that you're feeling, be aware of the energy, and use it in a positive, constructive way to better yourself. That is the best way. And you can do it to, you know, uh, be competitive, to like show to the other girl, look, hey, this is me now. But I don't really give a fuck about what she thinks about. You see, this is where it ties in with my philosophy is that I don't care what she's thinking about. Like, a woman could say, I love you. And she's staying there sucking my dick. So I'm like, maybe she does love me. I, that may be true. And if she, But if she says, I love you, while she's going off sucking somebody else's dick, then I don't buy that. I don't think that's true. I think that's a load of bollocks. I think she's lying. And, um, and women usually lie, cheat, and deceive when they lose respect for you. Something bad happened to me and I got really upset. I would find the most constructive possible outlet. And yep. that's a conscious decision. You have to have the emotional control to make a conscious decision in that direction. And women also, as well, find it very difficult to admit accountability and responsibility for things. Like, so they'll often try and make you feel guilty or like it's your fault or like you did something. And so they, when they think about leaving, they try and set circumstances up whereby, and they think you're fucking stupid. Like, you, like again, it's like a child in a way. It's like, it's, don't feel bad. If a girl leaves you and you haven't done anything wrong, don't feel bad. Because they'll try and make you feel bad so that, to, to put the emotion onto you and to put the responsibility onto you so that they don't have to fucking deal with all the hurt that they're trying to cause because they can't cope with their own betrayal. I've lost women who I didn't want to lose, but I let them go. I didn't beg for them back. That is exactly how you've got to be. I didn't cry about it. I just let them leave. I handled it like a man. And that's what I say. And I'd even say it to the girls that I'm with when I'm with them. I'm like, if you don't like it, the door's just fucking there. <laughs> you can go. It's not a problem. There are no problems. There doesn't have to be a problem in a relationship. Because there's the fucking door. The truth is, as a man, a woman doesn't even have to like you. She doesn't even have to love you. But if she respects you, she's always going to be around. That's what I say. It's all about respect. And if you go on your hands and knees begging and crying and moaning about why did she leave? I can't believe it. This fucking fucker. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Just go get another girl. Go get a younger, hotter, fitter, nicer, more honest girl. Because she was obvious. If she said she loved you and she wasn't going to leave and she left, then she's full of shit, isn't she? And. I've never known a girl to ever stay. Uh, like, all the relationships... Every time I've been in a relationship, all the girls have left me. Because they just can't be in a relationship. They can't... It takes work to stay in a relationship. And you know it takes work because it takes a lot of work as a guy to climb the mountain to get into... It's like a mountain. You've got to climb the mountain as a guy to get into a relationship. So when you're at the top, you're like... Ah, oh, you just enjoy the view. You're just like, ah, oh, it took me so long to climb this fucking mountain. Whereas girls are helicoptered in onto the top of the mountain because it's so fucking easy for them to get a boyfriend and to get somebody that wants to fuck them. So that it's easy peasy. So the moment it gets difficult, that when they get dropped off, say two thirds of the way down the mountain, and they've got to do a little bit of climbing, they just can't do it. They haven't got, they they, they ain't got it in them. They 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 don't realise that like. 
as a guy, you're putting in so much effort just to get her. And then once you've got her, she's got to put in a tiny bit of effort just to keep the relationship ticking over. And they can't fucking do it. It breaks them. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's bizarre. And this is why if I love a woman with all my heart and she goes, I want to leave, the first thing I'm going to say is, fucking pack me. Because if I say anything else, she's not going to respect me. I'll also help her pack so she can help get out quicker. I'll say, look, look, I don't want you to leave. I would like you to stay, but if you're going to talk shit and threaten me, you get the fuck out of my house. That's exactly what they do. They, they just treat you like shit. That's why I can tell when the relationship's coming to an end. Because they start acting like a Karen. They start treating you like shit for no reason. Because they're thinking about leaving you. And they don't. And they pick arguments over things that mean absolutely nothing. And then they do a Karen on you and fucking leave. And make you... I call it... Uh, friend, me and a friend of mine call it Karenoid. They make you Karenoid. To make you believe that you've done something wrong to deserve it. And you haven't. Because they can't handle the guilt that's inside of them. For the fact that they're destroying the relationship. I would like you to stay, but if you're going to talk shit and threaten me, you get the fuck out of my house. Like, I've, I've had women leave me, but there's never, I've never had a woman not respect me. And if I was to live with a woman again, I would move in, I would get, I would help get her a place and move into that. That way, if she starts acting up, I can just leave. I, I can just walk out the door because I wear this shit all the time. I don't need anything. So I can just bounce. So I would much prefer that if I was to live with a woman. Um, so that when she does come to break up with me, even after all the time she says she's never going to break up with me, because when the, th this is the weird thing, when they love you, they love you, and when they want to go suck some new dick, they don't give a fuck about you. So, and they, all the whole time they're trying to save the story that they've always loved you and will always love you, and like that Whitney Houston song, I'll always love you, while she's going to suck a new dick. It's, it's not true. <laughs> they think you're a fucking idiot. I would like you to stay, but if you're going to talk shit and threaten me, you get the fuck out of my house. Like, I've, I've had women leave me, but there's never, I've never had a woman not respect me. And that's why I can hit up any ex I've ever had, and I know them. Because they respect me on a base level. So, why do they respect me? Because I respect myself. So, I will never sacrifice my self-respect. That is exactly it. You cannot sacrifice who you are to appease somebody else. Even, you can't beg them to stay. You've got to just allow them to make their own decisions and allow them to make their own mistakes. They'll fucking learn. And there's an old saying called, the grass isn't greener on the other side. Now, I don't know how true that is, because maybe sometimes it is, and maybe sometimes it isn't, but it's a gamble. And uh, I, I think sometimes women don't care about the results of making a bad gamble. Now, I just want to have a look at something else here. Now, I know that uh, a lot of people that watch my channel uh, are big Andrew Tate fans and you might not have heard of Patrice O'Neill but I would recommend you to watch Patrice O'Neill in the same way that I'd recommend you to listen to me. Now there's an idea that Patrice O'Neill put forward that there's a woman that doesn't love you and that there's a woman that loves you too much that she doesn't know how to handle it and th she thinks that you're going to leave her so she kind of does a preemptive strike and leaves you first. Now I don't I don't buy this. I think it's a load of horse shit. But having said that, I do respect Patrice O'Neill. I learned a lot from him growing up. 40% of my philosophy is based on his teachings and his way of look at viewing the world. I have to give the OG some credit. So I'm going to include this in the video, even though I'm not 100% sure if it's true or not. So the concept is that a woman doesn't necessarily fall out of love with you because she loses respect for you and she leaves. Sometimes she loves you too much and she can't handle it, so she does a preemptive strike of leaving you because she's afraid that you're going to leave her at some point, and so she doesn't. So she wants to feel some degree of control in a situation where she just feels out of control. Now, I don't buy this. I really don't. I think that um, if a woman genuinely loves you, the thought of another man makes her sick, and she doesn't want to be lying down with another man and sucking some other man's dick. When a woman loves you, she loves you and she loves you completely. So I think she does actually fall out of love with you because she loses respect for you. But just because she loses respect for you doesn't mean to say you should lose respect to yourself because she's fucking wrong. And just because she's wrong, it doesn't mean to say you should be wrong. Like if she lies, it doesn't mean to say you should lie. She lies, you still be honest. If she's disrespectful, you still be respectful. 
just because she starts acting like an arsehole doesn't mean to say you have to act like an arsehole as well. Now, not all girls do act like arseholes, but at the same time, I've never known a good breakup where the woman wasn't starting an argument as she left. So this is Patrice O'Neill giving advice to Jim Norton and his girlfriend just left him. It's the banana in the tailpipe. Here's why she did that. She started to be fear who you are. So she tried to control that by leaving you first, by making the move because you're in a mansion and you're on the radio. And she's like, I'm going to get out of this because I'm a little too in love with you. That's her problem. She was too into you, you know, and she knows it's stupid because you told her, hey, I'm Jim Norton. And I might just not be any blah, blah, blah. And. And, you, and and she bounced cause to save her own life, dude. That's what she did. That's what they do. A preemptive strike? Yes, to get out of it. It's self-sabotage. She's into you too much. She love you too much, Norton. How the hell do you know all this stuff? Because I know how I am. I, I'm deep, dipped in low self-esteem. It's, it's melting <laughs> off one layer at a time every 10 years. And I know how people do things. They do. Like my girl, like I said, my girl is engaged to me. I'm not engaged to her. <laughs> she feels more than a girlfriend. For her love for me is more than a girlfriend. She's my girlfriend. I love her, but she's just my girlfriend right now. But I don't want to make her not feel like she needs a... That's what's wrong with women. They get to a point where they feel a certain way about you, and they need you to be exactly the same level. And you're not... It's, it's impossible, because when you take a woman out, you... You are auditioning everything, everything to her, and she's auditioning nothing to you. So when she's liking you, you're not liking her back. You understand what I'm saying? Wow. To the same degree. So that she's into you, you know, and trust me, she's suffering. Where is she going to find somebody else? Like, you're a winner. You were the lottery. You understand? Ooh. What other worm does she know that has, a ma has to pay mansion tax? <laughs> <laughs> Let's watch another Patrice O'Neill one. You see what I'm saying? He's like... I don't understand the, um, the the depths of low self-esteem because I kind of have self-esteem and self-esteem isn't the best way of framing it, uh, so Jordan Peterson says. So let's have another look. Question, fellas. If your girl left you, right, what would you really miss about her? What's she, what, her funny jokes? Yeah. Her, her, what? The, the way she talks to you when you don't want to talk to her? <laughs> you miss the routine. That's what you miss. You miss the routine of what? Just hanging out together, going out, the things that you do together every day. You miss no, that because you, no, you find yourself no, sitting know. alone. No, you, uh, we don't have a problem. We, 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 that's what, that's that's what, what you, you miss. We miss. That's well, what I you miss. That. That's what a woman misses. We don't miss your routine. That, that's what I'm saying. So why are you sitting I'm, home sad? You he sitting home sad. But that's why? my question. The arrogance and the ego that you thought the bitch was yours. Right. It's like, that you know what it's what like? It it's like possession. I said, it's like possession. it's possession. I got five watches that, and four of them I don't wear, right? But you Ever. can't take one But if one, if a nigga steal my watch, I'm going crazy. Because the woman makes you, and even tries to convince you that she's yours when she's not. Look it, I told my girl she's the, four, the fourth most important thing in my life. Okay? Oh, four now. <laughs> Tell you what the three ahead of her were. It was me, career, mother, and then her. Fourth. And then she knows she's there. She goes, but um, you know, yes, well, you're important. I consider you to be the person I'm gonna grow old with. So I kind of put you ahead of my family, like my mother or whatever. And I go, oh wow. Well, thanks, sweetie. But you're fourth. <laughs> <laughs> She's the fourth most important to me. Uh, never love yourself. Never love anybody more than you love. Exactly, and that's what I say as well. You are the most important person in the relationship. Let's see one more, and then that'll be into this heartbreak shit. Where I'm like, I want to give her money. I want to make sure she's okay, but at the same time, I want to make sure I'm okay too, and not a, not money wise, just mentally. I want to be happy. I think my my happiness is. Um, paramount i think that if it trickles absolutely he's gonna say it tr it's got to trickle down from you because you're the one putting in all the fucking effort and all she has to do is just comply and just enjoy herself now for me it's, it's better but for me i mean it could be misogyny or whatever it's not 50 50 i think a relationship could could if you look like you're better than her i don't know how to explain 
And all the women want a guy that's better enough. They want a guy that's taller. They want a guy that's richer. They want a guy that's stronger. They want a guy that's more emotionally secure. They want a guy that's funnier. They want a guy that uh, makes them feel secure. Like they, they want so much from you. And yet all you want is just a girl that looks nice and acts nice and is loyal. They're three things. I can look at her, so I'm attracted to her. She's a nice person. I enjoy spending time with her. If a guy likes you, that's better than a guy loving you. If a guy genuinely likes you, that is so much better than a guy loving you. And Patrice O'Neill brings up this point as well. And the third thing is loyalty. You're not with anyone else and you're into me only. Those three things, that's all a guy's looking for. And then in terms of a relationship, whether you're with a girlfriend, whether you're with a friend, whether you're with a family member, even with yourself, the three most important things in a relationship are, say it with me, honesty, trust and respect. And the reason why you have that as a standard is because women won't put that as a standard. They'll say they love honesty, but when you're honest with them, they can't handle it. They'll say that they respect you and then they'll fucking leave you and disrespect you. They'll say that you can trust them and then they'll do everything to prove that they're untrustworthy. So if you don't have a standard, she won't bother setting a standard. Because if she genuinely is attracted to you, all she's basing a relationship is how wet a pussy gets when she sees you. If it starts getting wet for somebody else, bye. That's how shallow and superfluous they are. So you have to have a better standard for a relationship. And that's why men find it easier to stay in relationships. And as soon as the wind changes, a woman fucks off. So you can't, you, you can't subordinate yourself to a lower standard. You've got you've to put a standard in place. Whether you have her or not. I that to make people not mad about it. I just think, you know, if, if she looks at you like, man, this dude is better than me, the relationship because she's going to always be, always be trying to make you equal or bring you down. So if you don't let her bring you down, she's going to love you forever. Because she, see, she hates how much she's in love with you. If your woman hates you, you're in a good relationship. Because she really don't hate you. She just hates how much she loves you. The same with resentment. She doesn't really resent you. She just resents how she feels about you and how out of control she feels about it. All right, I think we'll bring it to an end there. So, um, yeah, that's that's from Andrew Tate, Patrice O'Neill, and uh, Tristan Tate, and the other guys that are on the panel, and me. We've all got many years of experience, and we all know what we're fucking talking about. So, hopefully this has been helpful. You are the most important person in the relationship. The reason why you're the most important person in the relationship is because when she fucks off and leaves you, she won't give a fuck about you. She won't even talk to you. So you have to take care of yourself. And it has to trickle down from you, the happiness in the relationship. If you sacrifice who you are and your soul and your peace of mind and who you are as a man, you sacrifice your integrity and your self-respect for somebody that's going to take advantage of you, then you're lost. You're done. It's over. You have to respect yourself, and the way to respect yourself is to make yourself the most important person in the relationship. Once your cup is full, you can then fill her cup. But if your cup isn't full, and your cup is empty because she's drained you, or you've just drained yourself, or whatever, you've got a leaky cup, then she'll fuck off anyway. Oh, look, Haley sent me a message. Look, I'm on the phone to you. I've already had six Bumble matches. If you want to get popular with girls online, buy my fucking course. I don't even fucking know who Haley is. Well, let's find out. Let's see if she's any good or not. It's an auditioning process. So you've got to be the most important person in the relationship. And the way to do that is to preserve the self-respect and dignity and honesty and trustworthiness you have with your own sanity and peace of mind. The second thing is, when she does leave you, help her pack. Help her leave. Help make her go. Wish her all the best. Genuinely, wish her all the best and then get back on it, and then start recruiting for a better girlfriend. Because the guy that she'll go with will just be the guy, she'll go off with the fucking milkman. She doesn't give a fuck. She'll go off with the guy that comes to the door and just, hello, she'll go off with Fireman Sam, Postman Pat, she don't give a fuck. She'll go with the most convenient option, just at the tingling of a pussy. That's how she judges. She doesn't judge it on anything else, because she don't give a fuck. Whereas you as a man can be more logical because you're not doing it from an emotional plane. So once you've set up the framework of uh, this on paper is a good girl and I'm going to invest time in her and I'm going to allow my emotions to flow in. But the logic first, emotion second. So you're the most important person in the relationship. If she leaves, help her pack. Don't be resentful and hateful and all that kind of shit. It, it doesn't serve anybody, it especially doesn't serve you. 
And I'm going to do a separate video on how to deal with sadness and depression and all that kind of shit and how you can just flip it all around. I'm going to do a separate video on that. So if you like the kind of stuff that you're hearing in these videos, subscribe to the channel. I very rarely say that on this fucking channel, but I'm doing this for you. Because if you like watch this video and go, oh, that's all right, and then you don't subscribe, then you won't be notified of all the awesome videos that are going to be coming your way. And I genuinely mean that. I think that's the second time on all the hundreds of videos that I've made on this fucking channel I've asked someone to subscribe. And that's for your benefit, not mine. Third thing I'd say is abundance. Get back on Tinder, Bumble, Hinge. Get plenty. Open up that funnel. Get plenty of girls. Because once you got in a relationship with a new girl, then you'll forget about her. If you've still got her on your mind. And that brings me on to my other point is don't think about her. Don't worry about her. Now, it's difficult. Wait, to the untrained mind, it's very difficult not to think about something that you're so in love with or infatuated with or however you're obsessed with, however you want to frame it. But again, the upcoming videos I'm going to put on this channel will help teach you how to do that. Don't worry about what she's thinking about. Don't give a fuck about her and what she's doing and what you think about her or if she's got a new guy and all that. It doesn't fucking matter. She can be getting fucking gang banged by Manchester United for all I fucking care. I don't give a fuck. Because once she decides to leave me, I just stop caring. When she's with me, I love her more than anything and I die for her. The moment she decides to leave me, I don't care about her anymore. That's it. She's done. And also, the friendship thing can't really work out that well because, honestly, trust and respect, that's what you need for a friendship. And usually when she betrays you and betrays the relationship and all everything special that you built up, she's betraying the friendship. So you can't really be friends because they're qualities you'd want in a friend. There's another thing as well. I call it a Gordon. If you've ever seen Two and a Half Men and the character Rose on Two and a Half Men, she's got this thing going backwards and forwards with Charlie, um, who's played by Charlie Sheen. And she gets this guy, Gordon. And there's a scene, and I'll put the link in the description below, where she gets a new guy called Gordon, and she dresses him up like Charlie, gets him to act like Charlie, tries to wave him in front of him to make Charlie jealous. She's doing it all. She doesn't love him at all. She's just using him. Not even for sex, not for money, not for nothing. Only to get back at Charlie. But Charlie doesn't give a fuck. So this is the this is but this is one of the strategies that girls use. They get themselves what I call a Gordon. They'll get a guy that looks like you and then try to make you and then try to make him look even more like you and act like you and behave like you. And then eventually one day she's like, fuck, this guy isn't him. No matter what I do, I can't convince myself he's not the fucking man. I was with the fucking man. What the fuck was I doing? And then they try and come back. But in their mind, when they leave you, they try and make out, oh, he's heartbroken because I left him. It's all bollocks. You don't have to be heartbroken. When you see that scene with Charlie and Rose, it's fucking hilarious because she's making him out to be somebody that he's not. Oh, you're heartbroken. You're going to struggle to get over this and all this kind of stuff. And he doesn't, he doesn't even know what she's talking about. He doesn't care. He doesn't give a fuck. And that's the way to be. That's healthy for you as a guy. But she, the story that she has of you in her mind will be that, that, oh, you're destroyed without me. and Because that re-emphasizes the fact that she doesn't respect you anymore, even though she does. So anyway, that's the end of the video. Take care of yourselves.